So we're hanging out here. It's uh, Wednesday night on the Metallic Cave. We're talking to Mr. Rob Dukes, man. What is going on, Rob? What's up, brother? How are you, man? I'm doing awesome. How's everything with you? I'm good, man. I tell you now, and that's, man, that was a weird year, man. That was a good year for music, actually. It, it was, was really good, man. I mean, there were so many I really think, good albums. I think, I think Pleasures of the Flesh came out that year, didn't it? Wasn't that 89? Uh, it was not Pleasures of the Flesh. It was, um, yeah, Fabulous Disaster, yeah. I thought it was like 90 or 91. Wow, yeah, okay. Well, right. well, shit, that's a great album. Yeah. <laughs> it really is, man. Uh, and and yeah. from the days with Exodus, man, it had to be cool to, to go back and sing those classics, huh? Yeah, man, it was always fun, man. It was like, you know, I got to fucking sing those songs that I fucking grew up listening to, you know what I mean? I was, I was just a fucking metalhead fucking living in New York, listening to those records. And it did, you know, one day to be able to sit in rehearsal and go, hey, man, we got to learn all these songs. You got to learn it. Every song off Bonded, you got to use a few songs off uh, Pleasures, and then a, a couple songs off Fabulous. I'm like, hey, great, man, cool. And then I realized that Gary writes lyrics to, like, fucking, every song is, like, fucking War and Peace. So, <laughs> yeah. Memorizing all those fucking words was a fucking nightmare. I'll never forget, I went on vacation, like, right before my first rehearsal, after I'd gotten the gig. They gave me a list of songs to learn, and I sat there with a fucking notebook, and I just wrote them over and over and over again, thinking that, oh, well, you know, this will help me, I'll get there and I'll, I'll know the words. And then you get there, and I fucking, I, I listen to the songs all the way, I lived in L.A. at the time, and they were in San Francisco, so I, it takes like six hours to drive there, so I'm just driving up there. Listening to the songs, going, oh, this will be, oh, you know. And as soon as I got the microphone in my hand, and then he started playing, I'm like, I don't remember anything. Like, I just couldn't, it was so fucking weird that that's the way, the only way, you like, I could remember them was, was by, was like, it just, just repetition, repetition. And, and every song had, like, three verses, and fucking, they're just, you know. Especially a song, even a song like Fabulous Disaster, which is one of my favorite songs to sing. It was off time, and it was weird, and it was cool, but and the story was good of it, and it was fucking dark, but it had so many words, man, and, like, the cadence of it was, was exacting, and so, like, when you're singing those songs, if, you, if I were to get off just a little bit, I would be fucked. I would just, it would fuck everything up. So. <laughs> then they'd kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and, and here's the deal. Dude, so I thought that, oh, you know, maybe this is because I wasn't, you know, I wrote this up. When I do Generation Kill, it's the same fucking way. I got like a fucking, I have a cheat sheet on the floor that I stare at that has like all the words like written out. And, you know, I don't, I don't need them for every single word. But a lot of times, man, I just, I need the first word of the sentence or I need the first word of the, of the, of the verse or the chorus. And it's just there. It's like a, it's like a teleprompter, man. But I call it a ghetto prompter because it's just a piece of paper with my writing. <laughs> Of course he didn't, man. Yeah, uh, I talked to how about I talked to uh, Tom Araya too. He goes, he goes, yeah, man. I, I need a cheat sheet all up until the day, you know. After about third day on tour, I'm good. But he goes, but I forget shit all the time. Because the worst is when you when it's your play, you you think you're all good, and then it's a, you're like five seconds away from the oh shit, I don't know the first word, <laughs> and then you just mumble your way through it, and you, you know if you know the melody. But I love that uh, the era of Exodus. It, you know the. The you problem, I, I don't know if there's really a problem, but they had such great songs, and then they had ones that were kind of eh. You know what I mean? They were just yeah. kind of, <laughs> they were kind of eh. And I talked to Gary about it. He goes, yeah, man. He goes, that's what drugs do. Drugs, <laughs> drugs fuck you up. Yeah, I guess so. so. So you played with Judas Priest. Now tell me about that time you guys played with Maiden, and then they, they're they like, you'll never play with us again. Uh, we were in <laughs> Santiago, Chile. We fly down. We're opening for Iron Maiden. So there's like a really strict time schedule, and they asked me, they said, hey, man, that singer, 
the guy with the American flag shorts, he's not allowed to spit on the stage. Oh, shit. Because I guess the, I guess they saw the video. And they said no air boogies either. No fucking, no uh. stunt rockets on the stage. But basically what happened was during the last two songs, the crowd was so fucking intense. There was so many fucking people that they really couldn't move. There, there was no pit and there was no wall of death. There was no circle pit because, well, there was. But they were really far out into the back of the sure, arena. Sure, sure, sure. The, the front of the arena was so packed with people. They were just kind of like jumping up and down, and, and they weren't really moving around. It was fucking crazy how packed it was. And basically what happened was we went two minutes over in our time. Oh, my God. Our last song. So we went two minutes over. But here's, what, here's the cool part. So they were just breaking our balls, right? So Iron Maiden, you know, he flies the plane and the band. So it was the last show of their tour. So basically, when they came off stage, now we're all like fucking, we're all like, God damn, dude, we fucked up. We went two minutes too long. And all of a sudden, their tour manager comes in and says, hey, man, uh, when Iron Man's done playing, you can have their their backstage area because they're just going to leave. Oh, shit. So we went so we went and watched Iron Maiden. And then afterward, we all went back to their dressing room. And we thought we were going to meet them. They were already on the way to the airport to leave. Uh. And they said, it was a note. Enjoy the room, guys. And it was like, a, it was, dude, they had a, a tray full of, uh, of sushi for like 10. It had a, a whole fucking, like, everything, all the food you can imagine. Fucking endless, had a bar, had endless drinks and beer. We were there, dude, till like 6 in the fucking morning. And just everyone was just fucking hammered. And we were well fed, and it was we ate all their food, and, and it was great, man. It was one of the it was one of the great shows of, that I ever got to do, man. I'll never forget it. So. Yeah, yeah, man. I watched that video. That, that's a long video, the one that you posted up about you know your time with Jen Kill and all that uh, uh, with Overkill and stuff. Uh, Overkill with Exodus. It was crazy, yeah. man. That, that that now now your buddy helped you with the filming and all that. Was that Craig? <laughs> Craig helped me with it. Yeah, he's like he's all. Oh, Craig is awesome. He's the drummer of my in, in Dukes in my solo project. Very it's me, cool. Craig, and, and then Scott Reader from Caius is on bass. I've had different guitar players. I had uh, Johnny Rod Corsiari, my buddy from high school in New York. He wow. does some. Jay Trenzer does some. I'm gonna do some. So it's gonna be like an eclectic, cool uh, album. Yeah. So no. And so Craig. Uh, so basically, what happens? I would just bring a camera and film everything, and I'd give it to Craig, and Craig would edit it so it looked cool. You know what I mean? He was. Yeah, uh, yeah. He did the. D Have you ever seen the DVD, the sh shovel headed tour machine DVD? I did not see that. Okay, if you go to YouTube, you can watch the entire fucking thing. It's all on YouTube, or you can buy it on iTunes. It'd be cool. And then there's a whole other live concert. That's where that Great Wall of Death is from. Oh yeah, that's you know the one where. That's awesome. That's well, that's good. from that. That's from that DVD. That's from that. That's the footage from that DVD. The DVD is the first hour and a half is. Basically, me holding a camera on tour. Like, I just filmed everything for like four years, actually. It was like four years total, but it was like interspersed. And then we, me and Craig sat down for hundreds of hours and made a killer DVD, and the band fucking loved it. And so then, and also, we had a live concert that was the, the uh, Wall of Death concert. That's an hour, that was an hour show. We turned that into, uh, and that's also part of the DVD. So you get the backstage stuff. Then you get this big concert, and then you get also when you buy the DVD, it's a there's an audio CD of it too. So you get a CD of the other. Okay. So so after this stuff, so you did the Generation Kill first album, which was which is awesome, and then you did the second album, which is probably one of my favorite metal albums of all time. You know, oh, dude, I appreciate that. Thank it, you, it, man. It's, it's, it's yeah. freaking awesome. I mean, I have friends here that love Carney Love, and and they love all that stuff. And uh, looking forward to the new stuff. And you've done yeah. a lot of stuff between that. You did, you did, um, you did. You're doing the Duke's project, and you did something with yeah. uh, with DMC, correct? I did a whole album with DMC, man. We did like ten songs. It should have been like five songs, but we did ten. But we did an entire album. You know, it was just it was kind of one of those things where we we did it for fun, and then through no fault of mine or Daryl's, the business aspect of it got all fucked up. A bunch of egos got out of whack, and so we just decided just to walk away. You know, me and Daryl still friends, we still talk all the time. Good, it was just kind of like, hey, we got these songs, and that's it. You know what I mean? And then, you know, there was a lineup change in Generation Kill. Yeah, um, yeah I saw. I no longer speak with uh, Rob Machete. It just, uh, he, you know, he uh, he wanted to go do his own thing, and he left, and he quit. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, in a good way. It wasn't cordial. He just, he just did it, and then... Wow. I mean, I'm not going to get a, like a tip for chat, but he, he got, 
he just, I don't know, he was really unprofessional, man. It was just, it was unprofessional in the sense that he just, he did things that were just really unprofessional. That's all that it is. So now he can go do his own band and his own music, and that's, I think he tried to do that, and it didn't work out. I don't know what happened, but for some reason his whole band quit, and that was it. So I guess he's, he's, he's gone, right? So he's out of Generation Kill, and then we brought in, Jay Velez's brother Max to play bass, who's fucking awesome. Yeah, that's not great. only is he, he dude. He's now, now I got two brothers in the band, which is killer. Because yeah, yeah, brothers are always good to have. You know, they play well. They play great together. So we started writing tunes like a year ago, and then we got like so far into the record, and then we decided to scrap some of the songs and then start new ones. Like we just got to a point, like you know what? Let's just let's just stop what we're doing. We're going to keep these three or four, and we're going to get rid of these five, and we're going to write new ones. So me, Jay Trenzer, and Jay Velez have just, and Max have just been hammering away at writing riffs and putting them all together and doing the composition. So on the first single that'll come out, uh, Gary Holt did the solo for me, which is fucking killer. Oh, wow. That's so good and uh, I got a couple other guests and then a couple friends and just, you know, it was just, it, you know, it's been cool to call people and go, hey, man, I want, will you play on my record? They're like, fuck yeah. Uh, it's going to be a great record, dude. The, the first, the first like, three or four songs, man, are so fucking brutal. Like, the Exodus fans are going to really love it because it's, it's fucking heavy as fuck. And then they're also going to like the fuck that, it, you know, it's, it's smart. It's, it's just like, it's, it's, you know what it is? We took the best songs off. We're all gonna die. Like there is no hope. Uh. The prophets of war and Carney. We took those and we said, okay, those songs are the bar. Like so, we have to create stuff that it's either gonna be equal to it or better than what we've already done. Good. Yeah. So that's awesome. kind of that's kind of why we threw out some of the songs. Not that they weren't good, but it was like, okay, we already set we set the bar for ourselves, and we're not in a rush. We're not in a time frame. We don't. You know, we are, we're doing what we do. You know what I mean? And I'm not bound to uh, any kind of timeline or anything. And, and that's fine. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, man, same producer. I mean, Zeus is still involved and can do the, you know, uh, mixing and stuff. So it's killer, man. It's, it's all good. And then the Dukes thing is basically just me and Craig. Basically, we, we decided, you know, we, we kind of did all the stuff, our, not ourselves, but we, we've been mixing it and doing all this. I sent you a, a cover of a Sabbath song we covered. And the reason we did it was because number one, Trenzer fucking loves the song, and number two, it's when it's it's off technical ecstasy, right? So this is when Sabbath was so coked out oh, and boy. just so fucking crazy, and all the songs are pretty, they're not very good. Like the lyrics are fucking <laughs> terrible, right? The fucking it's just, but you know the song's like eight minutes fucking long, ah. but you know what? The guitar playing is great. The riff is great. The drums are awesome. The bass is phenomenal, of course. And then Ozzy's got these great melodies. Oh, it's sure. just that the lyrics were so bad that nobody really liked it. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, you know. Of course. So we, I, we did it for, we did it because, fuck you. That's why we did it. Like, we can do whatever the fuck we want. Exactly, so, man. Off. That's what like, you do. Yeah. That's what you've yeah. done. And that's awesome, man. And I'm looking forward to hearing this because I have not heard it yet. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's cool that you're going to play it. You haven't even heard it yet. You're yeah, going to yeah, play yeah. it on the show. That's yeah, all. I love doing that kind of stuff. So can we expect, are you going to release a bunch of Duke stuff or or just a couple? It's going to be it's, it's gonna be an album, man. I know. It's like right now we have like 10 songs total. We might do a couple more covers and put out like a, you, you remember how CDs were 74 minutes? Uh, yeah. Like we might fill up one of those. <laughs> we might just fill it up with, with stuff. We might just, I don't know. We're going to keep going until we're fucking bored. And then we're going to put it out. And, yeah. that's, and that's all good, man. So, and I can't wait till the generation yeah. kill, man. I cannot wait. No timeline, but I don't care. Because if it's as good as you yeah. say it's going to be, I can't wait. It's fucking, yeah. It's been a really enjoyable process, man. It really has. Let's play some Dukes. Let's do the Black Sabbath cover. Yeah, man. I'm in. All right, let's do it. Yeah. All right, so here's some brand new stuff from Rob. Dukes. Dirty Woman on the Metallica. That metal station.com. 